Hey guys, it's Katie here with Life in the Mundane, and today I'm coming to you with our third video on series on all things moving, and today we're going to be talking about showings. Showings um, on your house is definitely one of the chunks of moving and one of the bigger challenges of moving with kids specifically. And so today I'm going to be sharing some of the things that we did to prepare for showings, some of the things that we did to survive for showings, and some of the things that we did at times to thrive within that period of showing our house. Um, I wish we would have done those things every single time, but nobody's perfect. Um, so I'm gonna share some of that knowledge with you guys. So let's get started. Quick backstory, my husband and I have six kids. We put our house on the market um, and very quickly we're overwhelmed with the amount of showings that we got. We ended up having about 40 showings within 50 days um, and it ended up being quite a few showings a day. Actually at the beginning uh, there would be gaps of a couple of days here or there where we didn't have showings and then by the time the process was ending we were ending up having showings two to three to sometimes four times a day um, and those were not necessarily back to back so that would be leaving the house coming home getting back into whatever routine we were doing cleaning it all up leaving again coming back home and we were exhausted and well done with the whole process um, i grew up moving quite a bit um, I'm not military, but my dad was a pastor, so we did a lot of moving around for that. My husband on the opposite end moved once before we got married, and so it was a big change for him. And then we got married and moved every year for the first four years of marriage. So um, between us, we've, we've got a lot of experience, and a lot of what I'm sharing today are things that we have tried and worked, that have worked for us, but also things that, also things that I did growing up with my family. So I'm um, excited to share some of that with you guys. So the first thing is preparing for showings for showing your house. Um, this was challenging for me. So we homeschool our six kids. And so I had six kids, nine and under, in the home all day long, every single day. And that meant they were creating messes like any kids do. But it also means that in this process, I needed to school my kids. I needed to homeschool them and make sure that their education didn't suffer just because we were in this process of transition. And if I had known for some reason, you know, that we were only gonna have our house on the market for a week, I would have just called it a break and we would have taken a break off of school and then just jumped into homeschooling when we got done. But I didn't know how long it was last and I'm glad I didn't take a break the whole time because it ended up being um, a decent chunk of time. So other homeschool moms out there, I can sympathize. Um, and definitely these tips will be helpful to you whether you homeschool or not. I will do a separate video on how to homeschool during this crazy moving process. So if you wanna see that, be sure to subscribe to my channel. But um, I really wanted to say, part of what we did for preparing for showings was to take down the amount of clutter that we had in our house in general. So just getting rid of as much as we can. Moving is a great time to sit down and do that. But another thing that I didn't realize was is that in order to maintain the house to this level of cleanliness um, for showing a house, we really needed to like way cut back and minimize things. Way more so than I would be comfortable in just day-to-day -day living. So we started packing up all non-essentials and sending them out the door. Now we were blessed to have a family member who had a garage that we were able to store stuff in, but you can definitely do this with a storage unit. There's usually really good deals that you can get on the first month or two, um, just to kind of put your stuff away. And so this helps sending things like Christmas decorations there. Um, we cut down, obviously we have tons of books and there's no way I was gonna pack up all of our books, but we just saved out our school books and some of our favorite read alouds and the rest we packed off and uh, sent into storage. That. Um, decorations, whatever it is, getting rid of some of that extra stuff, especially when it comes to toys, cutting back to a more minimalist approach with toys and sending those off for storage was super helpful to us. One, there was less day-to-day -day clutter to actually clean up during a showing. And two, it actually showed me how much I can live without for sure. So while everything I put in storage is not something that I'm okay with just 
leaving completely, I realized there's a lot more of that stuff that's in storage that I was comfortable saying goodbye to that I didn't realize until after the process was over. So um, trying to get out as much as you can will really, really, really help with the preparation beforehand. Another thing is, is to explain to your kids this process. I kind of touched on this on last time's video where we were talking about just the process of preparing for showings, um, but explain to your kids how showings work that uh, your house gets shown, then you have to find somebody who wants to buy it. They have to offer you some, you know, they have to give you an offer, then you have to choose to accept the offer or counter the offer. Then even after it's accepted, then you're gonna have to go through an inspection and an appraisal and all this kind of stuff. And we kind of went over that process. Now we did it briefly. We weren't trying to bog our kids down or frustrate them or discourage them, but I did want to kind of explain that there are kind of a lot of steps to this process and it wasn't going to just be a quick one and done deal. They weren't going to just see, you know, the, the sign go out for sale, that it was sold quickly, that moving trucks came in, everything was out. We were in our new home overnight. It's not going to happen like that. And so I think that it really helped our kids kind of understand the process. Another thing you can do for preparing for showings before you get to showings is setting good habits now. So um, especially if you know this is coming, a lot of times you don't, but if you know that a move is coming, start working on habits. If your kids aren't currently doing chores, start instilling that of different responsibilities that they are taking um, and training them how to do that because as a mom, it's super helpful to have um, all hands on deck for this process. Another thing with that uh, along the same lines is that is setting up times throughout the day that you're gonna do regular pickups. So we did this as kids, we would have, you know, three times a day. So for us, uh, personally, we did like a 10, two, and six because those seem to be um, well spread out throughout the day and those seem to be around the times that we had frequently had showings uh, requested for. So at 10, two, and six, no matter what we were doing, we dropped everything and did a quick blitz of the house and got it all picked up and ready to go. Now. We didn't do things like plug in the air fresheners or bake cookies or maybe run the vacuum every time, but we did do all the general pickup and cleaning and making sure things looked nice so that we were not very far away. If we got a call that or got a text about a showing, we could easily get the rest of it prepared um, very, very quickly. So setting up that habit is a great thing to do. Plus, it might be a habit you want to continue after you move. Um, it can really help. Uh, we don't do it quite three times a day. That would be ideal. but very disruptive, um, but we do try to set aside time each day to do that same concept. So now we're getting into actually having the showings themselves and how do you survive this time period? Um, it is very challenging. I will say we had a lot of showings during dinner and ended up having a lot of dinners really, really late at night or in our car <laughs> um, while we were out and about or at friends or family members' houses. So I'm, I'm not going to say it's super easy and yeah, it's just, it's challenging. And depending on what you and your family's dynamic it is, it has its own challenges. But there, these are a few of the tips that we had to survive. One um, is by taking the tasks that were needed to do before our showing was done. So I knew that the trash can needed to be emptied. Um, I knew that the floors needed to be vacuumed, that the toilets needed to make sure they were all clean, that kind of stuff. Yes, we were doing that throughout the day, but these were the things that I needed to just double check that they all got done before we left the house. So we had a checklist printed up, we put it in a sleeve protector, we had it on the fridge, and we could just sort of dry erase marker, check it off as we went to make sure we weren't forgetting anything. Also along those lines, we had each kid, each person in the family had sort of one or two assigned responsibilities that that was their thing to make sure what was covered. I did double check all those things just because it was for showings, but um, it was really nice to know that several of those tasks were taken care of. Another thing that they recommend uh, for selling your home is to have fresh baked cookies. Imagine it more as their home. So uh, I loved this idea, but I was way stressed and overwhelmed at the thought of making homemade cookies multiple times a day for all those showings. So we <laughs> just went to Sam's Club and got the big bucket of Pillsbury cookie dough for like six or seven dollars, threw it in our fridge, and then we could just pull out and bake a few cookies at a time. This was a huge, huge time saver and a huge cost saver compared to buying like the break apart cookies or cookie dough in a smaller quantity from your local grocery store. Um, now, if you do love baking and have extra time on your hands, you can totally make uh, homemade cookie dough and then just roll it into balls and freeze it and just make that amount of cookies 
and have that ready for your showing. So that is just something that was a quick time saver for me, that way that I could still have a nice little extra touch, but not stress out during that time. Another thing with um, surviving showings is that we kind of figured out what worked best for us and for our family because we have so many young kids, everybody pitched in and they jumped in to help um, get ready for the showings as far as the house goes. But then for the last 10 minutes before we needed to leave, all the kids would go into the living room and they would have to have their shoes and their coats on and be ready to go, go sit in the living room and listen to an audiobook while I finished up all those last minute details and um, just sort of double checking things and whatnot. And then once we were ready to actually go, while I was sending them out to the car to get ready and get buckled in, I would come back in and do one more quick run through of the house. And this was really helpful as several times I found out that somebody may have taken out the trash but forgot to put the trash bag in or that someone had left the toilet not flushed. Not that that ever happens in your home, I'm sure, but <laughs> just those little details that um, are easy to miss at the last second. Um, and then also along those lines, we would always make sure we left our house about 20 minutes before a showing and didn't come back till about 10 or 15 minutes after the showing was scheduled because we had quite a few people that showed up early and I was really thankful that when they did, we were actually either out of the house and we heard about it later or that we were on our way out the door already. Another thing that came to surviving showings, and this is something that's a little outside the box, but we actually took a day off of showings, and I would highly, highly recommend this. But each week we took Sundays off, and I know that Sundays are our big open house days, and a lot of people like to see houses on Sundays, but we did take this time off. We do practice um, a Sabbatarian view. We continue that through our process of showing our house. And while it was hard at times when people were begging for a showing on Sunday, and we're like, well, what if this person is the one? We knew that um, it was honoring to God to take that time to rest. It was honoring to our family. It was so good for our family to have one day where it didn't matter what the house looked like and it didn't matter um, what was going on. We knew, they, the kids knew that if they needed a nap, they could take a nap and they weren't gonna get torn away from that nap we knew that we could spend that quality time together as a family. And um, I don't know how we would have gotten through that period of time if we had not taken that one day off a week for, um, for rest. Now, some things we did to thrive during this time, and I wanna be very clear that these are not things we did every single time there was a showing, but these are the things that when we did do them, things went so much smoother. And that was having a list of places or things to do during a showing already ready. Now, be careful of the expectations that you set. Initially, I had all these fun outings and surprises for the kids every time we had a showing, and that kind of backfired as you can imagine, because as the showings became closer together and more intense, the amount of time we were having to be out of the house, I couldn't keep up with those expectations. But I did have a list of a few family member and friends who had said, if you ever have a showing, text me, you can come over and hang out at my house. So we would have little spontaneous play dates. We went to the library a lot. Um, we also went to, we go to the store and pick up groceries, that kind of thing. But having a list already ready to go of ideas of places to go is really, really, really helpful. Um, another thing is to have a backup plan if there is nowhere to go, either because of the timing of it, that there's not anywhere to go, or for us, we actually ended up getting really, really sick during um, one of the periods of like one of the weeks of showings. And so we would deep clean the house to make sure that we weren't leaving behind all those fun germs for everybody. And then, but we didn't have anywhere we could go because we didn't want to pass those on to anybody else. So we would go drive by potential houses during that time and or drive around the areas that we were hoping to move because we were making a local move. Um, we spent time in our car hanging out, listening to audiobooks. Um, just actually at the end of the neighborhood, we would drive down the street a ways and park and just, I would pack some snacks and pass them around and we'd listen to audiobooks or Adventures in Odyssey or whatever in the car. So, um, or do school in the car, which we did as well. So, um, just kind of having a backup plan for what to do during those kind of oddball times is really helpful. Another thing that will help you thrive during the showing time is to pray a lot. Pray um, on your own, pray with your kids, pray for the showing process, pray for the people who are gonna buy your house, pray for the house that you're going to get. Um, it was really neat to sit down with the kids and talk to them 
about what they hoped that we might get in the next house and asking them not just for a wish list and to um, kind of get the gimmies, but instead pray through a list. And so each kid had a list of a couple of things that they were praying through for the house that we would get. And it was really neat to see how God actually provided quite a few of those requests. Um, my son in particular really wanted a house with a, a downstairs, a main floor, and an upstairs. And most of the houses we looked at were ranch style houses. And so I really didn't think that was going to happen. And then at the last second, the house we ended up getting had that layout exactly. So he's ecstatic and he's not just ecstatic because he got what he wanted. He's ecstatic because he sees that God answered that prayer. Another thing was to keep track of coupons. So we did end up eating out a decent amount of time, um, either because it would have been so late by the time we had eaten dinner or we weren't able to eat dinner right before we left the house um, just due to the fact that it would have been like three o'clock. Um, so we did try to kind of plan for eating out. And for several of those weeks, I actually decided not to go um, do our typical grocery shopping trip and actually just save some of that grocery money budgeted for eating out. Um, but another thing that helped sort of save some money and time with that was to download different apps for like different fast food places. So um, we would download those apps because a lot of times people, um, the companies in order to get you to use their app, they're offering all of these neat coupons and deals that are only available through the app. So Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, um, things like that had all sorts of great things that we were able to take advantage of to make eating out just a little bit cheaper. Um, also another one that people forget about a lot, but if, if you need to eat out quickly, especially with a large family, Sam's Club, we love to go in and just get a rotisserie chicken and um, a bag of lettuce and some rolls or maybe tortillas to do chicken wraps, whatever. You can do that really, really inexpensively, like less than $10 um, for our family of eight. And then we would also have leftovers to do that for lunch the next day or for another evening meal. And it was something hot and fresh and not greasy and gross either. So um, just cut yourself some slack again. Just know it is temporary for a short time and uh, understand that having a plan in place to do this more affordably, to kind of think about in advance will help in the long run. So I hope that's been helpful. I would love to hear what you guys' tips are um, sort of for that transition time of showings. I would love if you would subscribe to my channel. I post videos every Wednesday and Saturday. I'm making the most of the little moments in homeschooling, home management, parenting, and everything in between. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.